Well, welcome again on the Vintage Aviation News YouTube channel. Uh, today is Wednesday, July the 24th, Air Venture 2024. Today we have Esther Abi with Air Core Aviation. But before we dive into the interview, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the little bell. I'm going to put it right here so you'll be notified every time we go live. Uh, Esther, uh, I guess project leader, uh, project manager, right? I'm, I'm making up all these these titles and you tell me if I'm wrong or right about Air Corps Library, which is a, uh, we talked with Eric Trublad uh, about an hour ago, so we briefly touched the subject, but since I knew you were going to come on uh, on with us, uh, we didn't go too much into details, but it's a very fascinating project, um, which started with an incredible find of drawings, if it's a, if I, well, kind of, uh, sure. but um, before we get into the details, tell us a little bit about you uh, and uh, how you got involved with Air Corps Aviation. Yeah, it was a bit of an accident. Um, I didn't have an aviation background and I had just moved to Bemidji where Air Corps is located and a friend told me about the company and I was intrigued because it was related to history and I've always loved history. Um, my grandma was a German Jew that grew up in Dresden um, and escape to America just kind of at the end of when escaping to America was possible. And so I grew up with a fairly healthy dose of World War II history. Um, so it was, I was intrigued in that sense. And I just walked in the door and asked them for a job and <laughs> they said no. And then a couple of months later, they called me back and they said, you know, we might have something for you. Uh, my degree is in art conservation and I have yep. a specialty in books, paper. Yep. And so Eric thought maybe I would be a good fit in the library. At that point, they didn't have anybody working in libraries specifically. It was just kind of people having a few hours here and there to do things. And so it wasn't progressing really quickly. Um, and yeah, it was kind of, it was a progression. I started one day a week and then I went to part-time and then I went to full-time and now I manage the Air Corps Library division of the business. Um, well, for yeah. those who don't know, uh, tell us what it, what's uh, Air Corps Library then. Sure, yeah, the, the elevator pitch is, it is a website that offers online access to about half a million World War II aircraft engineering drawings and about 20,000 technical manuals. So our goal, our motto is preserve and serve. So scanning and cataloging all of this technical information for warbirds and pushing it out there to the people who need the information most to keep the airplanes flying safely. Perfect, perfect. Um, all right, then uh, something big happened, a big discovery happened, right? And we cover it on our website, but uh, I'll let you uh, I'll let you share the story of the North American aviation engineering drawings, sure. which is absolutely fascinating. How these documents got to us? Uh, to me, that's the, one of the most fascinating sure. part of the story. So, <laughs> right, right. Uh, talking about North American aviation, the uh, <laughs> music in the background is provided by a North American aviation product P fifty one. I think it's the Rebel. Um, taxing out. Yeah, so. I'm very biased about North American. I truly believe that they were the epitome of everything that happened during World War II. I wish they had manufactured every aircraft <laughs> during the war. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. But yeah, so the, the website, the Air Corps Library website launched in 2015. I came on in 2016. And then several years ago, it was the winter of 2019. We got this collection of original North American drawings and the drawings that we'd had on the website previously, all of our drawings are from microfilm. That's how the military distributed their drawings during the war. Um, and I had never seen an original drawing before. And then I heard about this gentleman, Ken Jungeberg in Ohio, who I heard through the grapevine had this collection of original drawings. And I was a little skeptical because a lot of people say original and that's not exactly what it is. Um, it's hard to know an original unless you've seen one. <laughs> but uh, I gave Ken a call. We started getting really deep into the weeds about North American part numbering systems. And he had worked at North American in the Columbus, Ohio 
division from 1969 to 1988. So he was the first North American employee that I'd ever talked to. But his incredible story was that he, in 1988, the Columbus facility was closing. They had been working on the B-1 and their kind of production was over and they were closing the doors. And he heard a rumor that their entire engineering archive of non-current drawings was going to get incinerated. And he knew, being a World War II buff himself, um, that that meant all of the data from the World War II aircraft that North American had manufactured. And at this point, uh, North American had merged with Rockwell, who was North American Rockwell in 1988. And so usually these mergers cause you know, purging of archives, sure. yeah, in some sense or another, and that was exactly what was happening. And so Ken decided that he couldn't let this happen. He was writing letters and making calls to his superiors, and essentially they said, you know what, nope, we don't care what you want, and all this stuff is on microfilm. That was their excuse. And so, and then a disaster happened that turned out to be the saving grace of everything, which was the room that they were storing the drawings in prior to burning them, a pipe burst. Filled the room up with water, soaked everything, they couldn't burn it anymore. And so after a couple weeks of it just sitting in a wet pile on the floor, they called Ken and said, you know, you were the only person interested. If you want it, you have to come get it today. So That's mainly because they just needed to free their room or like just get the stuff out of the building. It wasn't really with a preservation purpose. Oh, right? absolutely not, right? I mean, at that point, it, most people would have thought that the drawings yeah. were just ruined. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the vellum that they're drawn on is very resilient, and most of them are done in pencil. So pencil does not wash off in sure. water. It's not like ink. And so other than being a little bit dirty, most of the majority of the drawings were totally fine. And so Ken came with a truck, loaded them up, took them to a friend's barn, and dried them all out, laid them out flat, and then repacked them and then stored his, them at his house and in his hangar for the next 31 years until I found him. And he was kind enough to transfer how the collection. Find, actually, a, how did you find out about him? Did you read a newspaper article or like a, what no. was the, I guess, the leading factor to look for Sure, him? yeah, so it was a contact at the Tri-State Warbird Museum yep. in Batavia, Ohio. He had gone there and done a presentation to... Is that Noah? Yeah, yep. Noah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's done some articles yeah, for you guys. Is, yes. Yeah. Yep, he's done. Yeah, so he called me and he was like, hey, this guy just came <laughs> and he brought in some drawings and they were really cool and it seems like you would maybe want to talk to him. And so he gave me Ken's contact info and that was kind of, yeah, yeah. how it happened. It was, it took us a little while to iron out the details. Um, but Ken, the thing that he really wanted with the drawings was, he wanted as many people to enjoy them as possible because he had enjoyed them for the past 30 years. You know, he would organize them and look through them at home and they really were his passion. I mean, he was a draftsman at North America and that was how he started sure. out. And so he just really loved them. And I, we worked a lot to find a solution that would allow us to do that, share the drawings with the public and also preserve them as a whole collection, sure. which I thought was the most important thing rather than breaking them up into sure. smaller packages and having them kind of scattered to the wind. So, yeah. well, and uh, then you finally got to uh, see all these drawings. So what was your first reaction? <laughs> right. It was very emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, after a couple of conversations, I had asked Ken if he was okay with sending me several of them just to give me an idea of what was actually, you know, I wanted to, like I said, some people say they have something and then you mm. see it and you're like, well, that's not really what yeah. I thought it was going to be. And so he uh, sent me a few and the first one that I pulled out of the tube was the throttle quadrant drawing for the P-51D. And it's a drawing that on microfilm is just terrible quality. And it was, yeah, the original, it was perfect and beautiful. And I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the point where we really knew that Ken had something really amazing. And so we, Eric Hokoff and I kind of like, I think it was like two weeks later, maybe, yeah. like we flew down to see him and- Where, what, what, uh, where was he located? Um, oh man, New. he lives in New, is it New Lisbon, Ohio? He's okay. right kind of uh, in the Batavia okay. type airport, um, like maybe half hour from Dayton-ish. Okay. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. 
So, yeah, yeah, and went through his hangar and went through his basement. I mean, he had drawings everywhere. He had them in these long totes, you know, that you'd store wrapping paper in, just under his ping pong table in the basement. They were, they were just everywhere. It was crazy. It, complete treasure trove, like exactly what you would imagine, like Raiders of the Lost Ark, except for engineering drawings, so. <laughs> so that's, that's fascinating. So, and then the, the real job started, you know, starting to figure it out what you had and how am I going to organize all these drawings and documents? Right, yeah, correct. And actually the interesting thing about that is that we have people who come and visit and see the collection and they're just like, I don't, how do, how are you doing this? And it's just such a huge task. I mean, there's estimate, I estimate there's about 50,000 drawings, but in a way they kind of, they organize themselves because North American had such an amazing part numbering system that every drawing number is, it places the drawing in its correct area, you know, by model first and then by system within that model. And so I just use that that part numbering system to categorize like things together. And yeah, now I'm just entering it into a program so sure, everything sure. becomes searchable, right? What What about, uh, I assume you guys are going to eventually scan uh, yeah, some scanning, of the drawing? Yeah, scanning is kind yeah. of the last step. There are some um, copyright considerations to be taken yeah. into account. I mean, Boeing owns the, the trademark for North American. Um, so obviously we, don't want to step on anyone's toes there and we'd love to have an agreement with Boeing so that we can mostly I mean it is true that we have a lot of these drawings already on microfilm and people have access to them but the neat thing about the originals is that a lot of people just think about them as artwork sure I mean they're beautiful even the really technical stuff that you know isn't a recognizable part of an aircraft just the craftsmanship that these draftsmen we're creating these drawings with is it's incredible and so we'd love to work out something like that where we can you know maybe make some posters that's always what everybody sure. asks about sure. like i just want to hang this up in my shop right like it's so beautiful so and uh, i'm in the post mm -hmm. editing i'm going to put some pictures mm -hmm. here while we are talking because mm -hmm. i don't think people unless you read our article on vintage aviation news they realize what they are these are this is real art it is. Uh, you know, art can be obviously painting mm -hmm. colors, but you know, at the end of the day, they were using a pencil mm -hmm. and their hands to draw these engineering parts. And I, I don't remember what it was, but you did send me a picture of I, I, something maybe to do with the B-25 that the, oh, yes. the drawing is like how many oh, feet long? Oh, like 25 feet long. 20 yeah. feet, a single, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, sheet of paper, 25 yep. feet long, mm -hmm. all hand drawn. It's just, yeah. It, it, that, that's to me, it's art. It is, and I, I call it technical artistry. To me, yeah. the draftsmen are such a fascinating group of people. They're left-brained and right-brained equally. They understand the really deep technical stuff, the mechanics of how things work and how they go together, but they have the artistic talent to convey that in a really easy sure. to understand way. And I feel like that's something that's been lost with you know modern CAD programs and things. You have the computer doing that for you, and then it, it's not art at that point, true, I mean, you that step of yeah, putting your hand on a piece of paper and doing something manual is missing. So I think that you're definitely right. That's why art is kind of the first thing that comes to mind yes, when you it, look at definitely, these. Definitely, definitely. Uh, well, you guys have uh, air, um, air core art as well. So that's, we do, that's, that's yep. kind of, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, just understand so that the, the viewers can understand the magnitude. What, uh, I guess, uh, what percentage of the overall job has been com uh, completed in terms of cataloging, ca cataloging all the parts? Because you started, what, Ugh. 2015, right? Oh, well, 2019 Ta was 2019. stuff, yes. correct, okay. yeah. So, and it, there's a lot of drawings. So there is, yeah. So where are you at with the overall, I guess, uh, completion of the project? I mean, so out 20 of- years away? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if we're thinking about getting things scanned and all of that, then it's way down the road, job security. I mean, at this point I've cataloged, well, everything is in order by part number. You know, I can go to a box and say, this box has a 62 prefix for the B-25, but you know, that stuff isn't, it's just a box of drawings, right? The the stuff for the Mustang is all, it's much more organized. It's all in numerical order by prefix. 
and also by part number suffix as well. Um, so that I can find it at this point in the, the digital cataloging system that I'm using, I've got a little over 15,000 drawings catalog. So 15 out of 50,000, it's not, you know, um, definitely not halfway gone there. Through uh, all of them, all oh, the blue angels just flew by. Very nice. Um, and have you gone through all, I guess, the boxes, the cases, uh, yes. so you know what you have? Right, I've touched okay. every single okay. drawing at this point okay. to sort it by part number prefix. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I, I kind of had to curb my enthusiasm a little bit and like just yeah. look at things like really quickly yeah. because yeah. you can get, you know, engrossed in one sure. drawing and sure. then nothing then, will ever then get done. You get lost. Yeah. And uh, so we got what, B51, yep. uh, B25, mm -hmm. what else? Uh, T6 and not just the T6s that we see here, but early, early variants okay. of the T6, like into the mid thirties. Uh, we got twin Mustang um, and a, a decent amount of T28 stuff yeah. as well. That's yeah. kind of where it cuts off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, what, uh, what's, I guess, the next step for um, Air Corps, Air Corps uh, Library? Well, I mean, the stuff with Ken, I wish I could work on it more the stuff with Ken, but I do have all these other tasks with the main Air Corps Library site and all the information that we do make available to the public um, outside of Ken's collection. And that's kind of where the bulk of my time is getting spent right now. Um, the website's really grown a ton in the past couple of years. We've added a bunch more drawings and I've doubled the amount of manuals that we have on the site, um, which is really, in some ways, it's much more critical uh, to the work, not only that we're doing, but just industry-wide, sure. I mean... Yeah, and, and yeah. You, you touch a good subject because we've been talking about a lot of the word art, uh, but Air Corps Library is actually a tool used by several restoration shops across the world, for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the restoration shop. So if you're watching this video, check out Air Corps Aviation, uh, Air Corps uh, Library dot org or dot, dot, dot com, com. Dot yeah. com because yeah. if you're restoring an aircraft, very likely you might be finding uh, a drawing that you might need. So, uh, anything yeah. else? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. That's, well, that's we appreciate your right. time. Yeah. Uh, we'll be publishing an article very similar to what we discuss, uh, discuss today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Esther, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate a little bell when we go live and more guests are coming over. So keep watching.